For the past several weeks, California has witnessed its historic Tulare Lake reemerge. Today, about 160 square miles of the lake basin are underwater, and the expansion of the lake has wreaked havoc on local communities, flooding many farmlands. The largest city close to the lake is Corcoran, which has a population of 22,000. Many homes were flooded and roads closed in the area. There are also smaller towns in the lake's vicinity such as Allensworth and Alpaw, which have also suffered from the floods. As the situation worsened, officials warned of worsening floods in the Central Valley due to a large amount of snowpack from the Sierra Nevada melting and sending more water into the Tulare Lake Basin. The forecasting prompted concerns over potential levee breaches and displacement of residents. The runoff from melting snow is anticipated to drive the amount of land that's inundated by floods higher to between 182 and 260 square miles. It is anticipated that this re-emerging lake could eventually expand to the size of Lake Tahoe. But according to latest updates, it seems like flood risks have been averted due to state efforts to raise levees, and farmers work to divert more water from Tulare Lake for irrigation. Also, cool temperatures have predominated this spring, flattening the melt curve of the Sierra's epic snowpack. Yet, that does not mean the flood risk has fully abetted. With unpredictable weather, there is still a chance for more floods to come. In today's video, we will uncover the truth about the Lake Tulare situation, providing insights for what to expect in the near future. Before we get started, don't forget to click on that subscribe button and leave a comment as it's the best way to help us grow as a channel. Tulare Lake was once a permanent feature of the San Joaquin Valley. It covered an estimated 790 square miles, about four times the size of Lake Tahoe, creating a biodiverse wetlands ecosystem that encompassed approximately 10% of California. In the late 1800s, settlers began diverting Tulare's tributaries for agricultural purposes, incrementally drying the lake and exposing nutrient-rich soil. Since the lake dried up, it has been commonly known as a phantom lake meaning it is a temporary body of water that usually appears during times of heavy rain. Now, the lake-turned-farmland is a powerhouse for agricultural production. The four counties within the basin, Fresno, Kern, Kings, and Tulare, are some of the top producing counties in the state. As one of the most important agricultural regions in the state, the Lake Tulare Basin is worth an estimated $2 billion in dairy products and crops like wheat, grapes, tomatoes, cotton, corn, alfalfa, almonds, and pistachios. Tulare Lake serves as a natural watershed for the Sierra Nevada mountain range, which channels meltwater through various rivers and into the basin. Today, the entry of water into the basin is blocked or diverted by levees and dams, but recent storms have shown that these systems are limited in their ability to prevent flooding in the event of a significant influx of water. Heavy rain and snow in the first three months of 2023 brought water to Tulare's lake bed. The basin's agricultural activities were devastated and farmers were forced to relocate cattle from the region. Several videos and images circulating on the internet show the extent of land that has been submerged consequently and the damage is far worse than you could imagine. Several weeks ago, officials warned that the arrival of storms could cause more flooding in the region. Officials worried that floodwaters from the melting Sierra Nevada snowpack would surge down the Thule, Kings, Cahuilla, and Kern rivers and topple berms, breach levees, and inundate towns of Corcoran and Stratford. Despite the already significant flooding, most of the water that will enter the Tulare Basin hasn't done so yet. By March 2023, parts of California saw more than 500 inches of snow during a historic wet winter season. That snowfall means that there is a lot of frozen water currently in the mountains, more than 30 inches in some sections to be specific, that will melt when the weather warms. It is reported that the snowpack contains enough water to fill downstream reservoirs multiple times over, which could mean a rapid runoff. As seen already, 
Water is quickly flooding back into the Tulare Lake, engulfing towns and farms, submerging roads, and forcing residents to move elsewhere, and the lake basin is predicted to remain flooded for as long as two years. Even though officials warn that the arrival of storms could accelerate snowpack melt and cause more flooding, the latest forecasting models now suggest Tulare Lake will not surpass a height of roughly 184 feet above sea level, thereby curtailing any serious damage as it was expected several weeks ago. As nearby communities sit 188 feet above sea level, flood risk won't be as severe as expected earlier. The cool spring thus far has helped alleviate flooding concerns, as the snowpack melt has been slower than expected. But the threat of the big melt remains cause for concern as much of the deepest snowpack in the southern Sierra Nevada is yet to melt. Though a warm atmospheric river event or a prolonged heat wave could produce major flooding in the area, even gradual snowmelt threatens to make the current inundation worse. So there's still significant risk to populated areas in parts of the San Joaquin Valley for the next few weeks at least, and probably for the next couple of months. The state is stockpiling sandbags and other emergency equipment should the weather change. Although the area is in better shape today compared to a few weeks ago, the area is still under risk as the weather is unpredictable. If temperatures increase in the mountains quickly, causing snow to melt faster, that could increase flood risk. But this time around, officials are hopeful that breaches that could impact hundreds of families won't happen as efforts are currently underway to divert the water. Besides, multiple agencies have been working together around the clock to prepare for the snow melt. Despite how things are looking right now, it would be wiser for anyone living near the lake or a flood zone area to be prepared for an evacuation should there be an unexpected levee breach. In an effort to prepare for what is to come, the state has already put up more than $17 million to raise about 14.5 miles of levee standing between the flooded lake bed and the city of Corcoran. But there are other measures being taken as well, both upstream on the rivers and to the south in Kern County, to divert flood water before it even gets to the lake. To minimize the risk of flooding, State water officials took the rare step of opening a connection from a flooded river into the California Aqueduct, one of the latest measures to divert water from reaching Tulare Lake in the first place. On May 20th, gates were opened at the Kern River Intertie, a connection at the terminus of the Kern River in western Kern County that allows excess water to flow into the California Aqueduct to be carried south and out of the San Joaquin Valley. It's the first time in 17 years that the Intertai has been opened. Since the Intertai was built by the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers in 1977, it had only been used in nine prior years. Currently, 500 cubic feet per second are flowing into the aqueduct. That's about 3,700 gallons of water per second. Even though there are multiple concurrent efforts underway to move water around and ultimately protect communities in the Central Valley, that does not mean the region is still safe. Mathematically, the situation does not look good, and now, everything is going to depend on Mother Nature. It's the timing and strength of these unusually warm sunny periods, plus the arrival of any final wet storms of the season, that will determine the seriousness of flooding over the next few weeks. For now, it's important that people in the Lake Tulare Basin prepare for the uncertain future and adapt to the changes that lie ahead. Leave your thoughts about this topic in the comments below. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.